So I'm hoping that you can all hear me and see me. Um, if you can just give me a, a thumbs up or whatever in the um, in the comments and let me know that you can actually see me. Uh, it, there's a bit of a lag, um, but um, we should be we should be all ready to go. Um, I've got to find somewhere for my phone to sit so I can actually see what you're saying to me. Um, put that there, I think. So, um, yeah, so please let me know that you can hear what I'm saying. Um, yes, you can hear me. Oh, fantastic. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I might sound a little bit um, echoey. Um, and the reason there is that um, my studio has nothing in it apart from my computer and my drawing board. Um, <laughs> because I'm having a refit, which is very, very, very exciting. So um, really, really happy to be here. Really happy to have everybody here and um, joining me. Um, I need to see if I can just try and get my... Sorry about any sound issues there, but I just want to try and get my phone so that I can read um, what I'm doing. And then we're going to get cracking. So... Um, now then okay good brilliant okay so we've got the lovely Nelly here um, and you should have hopefully you've got everything downloaded and all sorted and everything like that and um, I'm going to try and answer your questions as they kind of come up I've got my phone here ready um, to help me do that so if you do have any questions then do please um, you know uh, pop something up and I will um, uh, I will Oh, I'm just going to put it that way and then hopefully I can see it. Yeah, okay, good. Hopefully my microphone doesn't drop down. It's resting on the top of my phone. <laughs> so hopefully it'll be okay. Right, so we're going to get cracking. Um, so I'm doing my non-pastel map. Um, it's... I, I, it's a fantastic surface obviously it's not going to be on oh, thank you ever so much everybody who's sending me birthday wishes thank you so much um really really kind of you i had a lovely day thank you um yeah so i'm using pastel mat it's not massive you can see it's sort of not very big kind of about the the um uh, height of my hand because obviously we're gonna we're gonna get cracking we're gonna get something done within a couple of hours now um, this isn't going to be super detailed. It's not going to be, um, you know, like tons and tons of layers or anything like that. And that's why I've chosen the colours that I've chosen and the pencils that I've chosen. The other thing I haven't got as well is I don't have a piece of glass. I have got glassing, but I don't have a piece of glassing paper over the top of mine. So my hand is going to be... Um, kind of resting on the pastel mat and I would not recommend that I would say always have something underneath your hand um you know so that you're not sort of smudging everything I'm, I may end up getting a piece of paper to be honest but um um you know uh at the moment I'm just going to sort of stick with this so when we look at Nelly um the photo is not brilliant it was taken with my iPhone on portrait setting um, so there's just a little bit blurry but it's it's a lovely picture it really sort of um shows her character and what we're going to do is we're just going to get we're just going to get started um, we're going to be going quickly um, you know I, I mean I, I, I am quite quick when I draw anyway we're going to be drawing at quite super speedy uh, what I want you to do is just take a deep breath and just go for it don't worry about whether something's in the right place or whether you know this is the right size or whether it's the right color or whatever just go for it um you know you're drawing along with i don't know how many people across the world and it's the most fantastic thing to do it is so much fun um and we're just gonna have a fun time and of course it's my lovely nelly so what we're gonna do is um i'm gonna start with something dark um and i'm actually going to start with um i think I've got a Pablo here. Pablos are really great, actually. They're sort of quite velvety. Oh, I've got my electric eraser as well. Let me just sharpen that quickly. Um, they're quite velvety. They go down quite nicely on the pastel mat, and it means that we can kind of get going a little bit quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with her eyes here, um, and I'm just going to come in and with my super-duper amazing... Um, line art here and we're just we're not going to be we're not going to be careful or anything we're just going to get this color whacked in just come around here which is sort of like the outside of her eyeball and then we've got the white of the eye in here as well and um, we're just going to bring a little bit of that color in there we're not going to get all het up about oh gosh is this right or is that not right and all of that kind of stuff what i would say is um keep your pressure nice and light 
Um, don't go too heavy. You don't need to go too heavy regardless of what paper you're using. Let's keep it nice and light. Um, and we're just gonna come in. And what I want to do is I just wanna get this dark area in here plotted in. So she's got this really, really dark area around her eyes here. And you can see with my pencil, it's kind of going like the clappers, I know, but I'm sort of doing random pencil strokes. So they're roundy, they're up and down, they're kind of um, not particularly anything really. Um, and I'm just sort of getting that lovely dark color in there. Thank you so much for my birthday wishes. It's really, really kind of you. I did have a lovely day, I had to say. Um, I didn't do a huge amount. Um, I had a marketing meeting. My mum and dad came round, which was lovely. I had the man come round. Did the man come round for the blinds? Oh, no, that was on Thursday. The man came round for the blinds. Um, but, um, yeah, oh, the electrician came round. That's what it was, yeah. So all sorts of fun, fun things. <laughs> fun things happening on my birthday so I'm using black um, and you can see it's going in quite dark now the beauty of the pastel mat is that I can put other colors in there and kind of bring the color around but um, I'm just going to carry on using the, the, the black you might be using um, sort of like a dark gray or something like that and I'm going to come in and I'm going to put it around the other eye as well now, these eyes are really quite shadowed um, again I'm just going to bring it around there there's all sorts of different ways of um, of tackling a piece with um, with coloured pencils, and and the way I'm doing it now isn't my usual way if I'm doing something really really detailed, but actually when we're doing something quite speedy like this and doing more of a sort of a sketchy uh, approach, um, it's quite good to get all of your darks in quite quickly. How do you get the line art to join, Shelley? If you go to my Facebook page. Uh, Bonnie Snowden Fine Art, you'll find the uh, image and the line art in there um, that you can download um, and um, you know so you might want to sort of watch and then do it do it later maybe it might be easier for you to do that um, but it's, it's all there for you to download. I'm just going to bring my image in a little bit more here. Good okay so we've got these two dark bits in here which is quite nice. What this means is we've started we've actually put a colour on the paper and we've got going. So now what I want to do is just work a little bit into those eyes and get those kind of come into life. I'm going to use a dark indigo it's something that I always use for my eyes. Um, I'm just going to sharpen that as well. See very prepared. So um, I always use polychromos for my eyes because they are a little bit more translucent than other colours. Um, and you can kind of see through the layers. Um, so pupils, I tend to always start with a layer of dark indigo. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use very little round pencil strokes. And I'm just going to color those pupils in. I'm going to leave that little white spot um, there. Now Nelly has got, she's she is absolutely bonkers, is Nelly? She's a, she's crazy. And her eyes are always sort of like really wide open and uh, full of crazy mischief. Um, I'm going to do the same over here. So I'm just going to go nice and gently, really, really lovely light pressure. Don't feel you have to get them really, really dark black or anything like that just yet. The key with colour pencil is those lovely layers, building it really nice and gently. So I'll just get that in there. That's okay, Shell. Um, I hope you find them. I, I mean, if you don't, if you don't find them just yet, you can you can watch again later, and you can sort all that out later. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do with with these is I'm just going um, to just pick out a little bit of that light colour in there. This eye here is is very much in shadow, um, so it's not quite as dark. Hi, Janice. How are you? Um, and um, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of this uh, colour in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a mixture of two colours for those eyes. Oh gosh, where is it? Go. I'm going to use the light yellow ochre and I'm going to use the warm grey too uh, for her eyes. So again, I'm just going to I'm just going to sharpen these up a little bit. Once we've got the eyes done, we're going to get we're going to get absolutely flying then. Um, so. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of letting you into this gradually. <laughs> and then we're just going to go for it. So I've got my light yellow ochre here. Um, Nelly has got these very sort of strange yellowy coloured eyes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a very, very, very light layer of this light yellow ochre um, into her eye here. Just 
just all the way around, just a nice light layer. If you're using a hot press paper or a very smooth paper, you might want to just increase your pressure very slightly. With pastel mat, you don't really need to. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Polychromos Warm Grey 2 and I'm going to go in over the top of that yellow that I've just put in. And what that's going to do is it's going to sort of gently merge it and blend it, but it's also going to give it a little bit of a grey colour that um, is just going to knock that yellow back very, very, very slightly. So I'm just going to bring that in there. When I'm thinking about my colours, when I look at something, I think, what colours am I going to use? What happens in my head is I have all of these colours just sort of springing up. Um, Hi, Dee Dee, thank you very much. Um, yes i just have all these colors kind of springing up in my head and and you know for, for me when i looked at this i was i was thinking yeah yellow ochre and the and the warm gray too we're going to kind of get that sort of um yellowy color in there and i'm going to come in with the uh, polychromos black um and the the pencil sharpener i'm using is my swordfish multi-point it's an electric one and i absolutely love it um, I mean, it really, really is the most super, super pencil sharpener. It's quite big. It takes every single sort of pencil and it's just brilliant. So I've got my black polychromos here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and darken these pupil areas here. And you'll be able to see when you look at the pupil, you'll be able to see that there's sort of um, half of it that's sort of quite dark. I'm just coming in here. I apologise if my head pops into view every now and again. I, I always have to wear a little peak cap. I look really quite strange when I'm drawing. I have a peak cap and I have these glasses where one of my eyes looks bigger than the other. <laughs> I look like some sort of a mad scientist person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it um, because my light is in front of me so that I don't get sort of awful shadows and stuff um, I, um, I have my light right in front of me which means that the light shines in my eyes which means I can't see any of the um, the values properly so I have like a little golfing uh, cap on um, and yes I look very bizarre uh, but it, it works really well <laughs> so I'm just going in and I'm using a little bit more pressure and I'm just bringing in that uh, darker area on the top there of both eyes a little bit more down here nice light pressure still I've got a little pinpoint there of light and then I'm just going to come in on the edge there as well okay and then um, while I'm at it I'm just going to darken around the edge of her eye there like I say we're not going into masses of detail we're just sort of plotting in what's there and then I'm going to do the same down here as well. Definitely has a look of a completely mad um, dog. <laughs> she's, she's a complete lunatic, she really is. She's such a darling. She loves cuddles and everything like that. She wants to sort of be on your knee and everything all of the time. But, um, you know, if, if anything's happening, she's like, oh, I, I, I'm ready, I'm ready. And uh, she's just a total nutter. Um, Right, so let's just darken up in here a little bit more. Just with that polychromos. We're not kind of going to be doing much um, with that. And then what I want to do is just bring in a little bit of the cold grey one. So again, polychromos, cold grey one. Um, and I'm going to just bring this in a little bit in over the top of um, the black. What that will do is it will, uh, it will just smooth and blend the black underneath. And we'll get another little bit of light in there. And again down into here so we get sort of like a little bit of not so she looks like she's got cataracts but just like she's got a little bit of light shining in there um, and then I'm going to use the brown ochre polychromos brown ochre oh gosh sorry that was a um, pheasant flying past the window um, <laughs> they're really noisy and then I'm just going to bring in a little bit of that in and around the edge and down into here as well so they're, they're, they're realistic eyes, but they're not, you know, we haven't spent hours and hours. I mean, you could spend sort of like an hour on each eye if you wanted, um, but her little eyes are in there now. Um, and then what I want to do is just darken up very, very slightly the tops. And for that, I'm going to use my warm grey, um, warm grey four. So warm grey four or warm grey five. And I'm just going to very gently just bring in Again, just gently bring in that bit of colour. So with it being the polychromos, you don't lose the colour underneath. Um, 
you still get that translucency through um, but you can just sort of darken it up a little bit so we're just getting that gray up on the top there a little bit in there and then we've got a pair of really nice little eyes um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to crack on with the rest um, so we're going to start with her head up here um, I'm going to move on to using the um, Pablo's and you can see I'm not using a really sharp pencil if I use really sharp pencils when I'm doing the fur we're going to get some harsh lines and everything in there the other thing that I'm not going to do is I've got a very vague outline here it's actually more confusing having all of this stuff in here but we're going to kind of go with it but um, I'm just going to now start to plot in some of these darker areas so i'm going to go really nice and light i'm going to really look at the direction of the fur and where the fur is going and i'm going to use this sort of nice sketchy um, way of drawing now when you have dark colors in over the top of or on on white pastel mat you'll see that it's very very grainy um, you know and and that can be a little bit disconcerting and a bit frustrating when you first start if you if you're used to using smooth paper and you and you decide to have a bit of a play with pastel mat the, the first thing that usually runs through your head is oh, oh my goodness um this is horrible <laughs> and then you put your pastel mat away and get your smooth paper back out um and it's only horrible because you're used to using a specific technique and you're used to seeing a specific um you know uh, how your pencils work um, and pastel matte works very very differently to those smooth papers and your initial layers are going to look really quite rough and ready and they're going to look quite grainy and you've basically just got to um, this is the charcoal bay by the way sorry charcoal gray pablo uh, you've just got to embrace it you just have to embrace the graininess the graininess is there so that we can get lots and lots of layers in and we can get lots of depth um, you know, I mean, with pastel mat, if you want to, you can get you can get so many layers on. Um, but also, there are techniques that you can use where you can just get two or three layers on. Um, you know, so there's all sorts of things you can do. It's a very very versatile paper, and it's incredibly forgiving. You can use erasers on it. Um, you can use tape on it. You can use wet medium on it so if you wanted you could use oms i don't ever use oms but if you wanted to you could um you can use watercolor pencils on it uh, um you know you can use acrylic on it it's um oh sorry yes yeah, pastel mat it's the pastel mat board um you know so it's a really really versatile uh, paper i know sometimes it's a bit difficult to get hold of and i use the board so the board is sort of a, a little bit different to the sheets it's it's slightly um well quite a lot smoother actually um and it's just it's so lovely to work with it really is really really nice to work with so i'm going to leave out this area around here because this is all very very light and i'm just going to work on the area around her face i'm working with the really dark color um, and then I'm going to bring in a little bit of lighter colour in there as well. So you can see I'm not putting blocks of colour in, um, you know, sort of um, solid blocks of colour in. There's always little bits missing. And that means I can bring in another colour over the top and, um, you know, could sort of add a little bit in there. Um, with pastel matte is great anyway because those colours will sort of go over the top really nice and easily um, the key with doing something like this and actually what you'll probably end up with in the end when we finished if you wanted to you could use what we're doing as a as an underpainting and you could then go back in and start to really um, build your details if you want to um, mine will be once we're finished it'll be finished I'm, um, I don't I don't tend to go that's why I find it really hard to have uh, more than one piece on the go um, at any one time because I find it really hard to kind of get back into a piece um, and at the moment I've got one oh I've got three pieces on the go at the moment so that's not so bad um, I've got my lovely Exmoor ponies which actually I'm trying to find I need to I need to look a little bit harder but I'm trying to find a charity maybe that I can um, I can raise a bit of money for by auctioning it off or something like that because uh, they are an endangered species now with the Exmoor ponies. Um, so you can see as I'm coming up into the top here, we've got these crazy curls and it would take us absolutely yonks to, um, uh, you know, to sort of copy the, the, the picture exactly. So what I'm doing is I'm just sort of putting random marks in, um, if I'm being completely honest. Um, 
the, the more random and the more loose you can make the marks, the more likely it is that they'll look like crazy curls. Um, you know, I'm not one for sort of sitting and, and trying to plot out exactly where everything is. It, it does work and you know there are some artists who do that and the, the, their work looks absolutely amazing but um, I tend to go with the look and feel so I'll look at the fur I'll think how does that feel what can I do just pop this down just a little bit so that we don't um, you don't lose the top there um, oh no Ollie don't put a brush on <laughs> yes anybody who's using pastel mat um, I won't demonstrate, but basically, if you if you you're used to using hot press paper or drafting film, and you're used to kind of pulling off your pigment with a brush, if I brush this over um, Nelly here, it, it's gonna all um, it's gonna just blur out. <laughs> it's just gonna go off. So don't use a brush unless you want to use a brush to sort of help blending and smoothing and everything. So um, thank you, Minnie. That's really kind of you. Thank you. Um, right, okay, so we've got some darks in here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to just add a few of the little darks in the nose here. So I'm back on with the black. And I'm just going to come into her little nostril area here. And just so we get an idea of the nose and how that's working. Um, I've done a really bad job of uh, the line art here. I, I always tend to do that. I'm dreadful. I leave it until the last minute. I'm ever, I, I was such a procrastinator, it's unbelievable. Um, everything's left till the last minute. <laughs> so the joiner's coming in tomorrow to start fitting all my new um, studio cabinets and everything. And of course, I mean, we have taken the majority of the, um, the, uh, the, the furniture out, but I've still got quite a lot in here. But that was a, um, we, oh gosh, anybody who's, um, a skip anybody who's got a skip or gets a skip on a regular basis oh my goodness I love a skip and you just put it outside your house and you just throw everything in it it's well not everything you kind of restrict it but oh it's fantastic so we've we've just been going crazy I've been really really quite ruthless in um in what I've been doing <laughs> it's getting it all all taken out so just bring in a little bit of um dark in here um uh, just to sort of get an idea of the nose area here and what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to bring in more of a sort of a brown colour uh, I think I'm going to use the walnut brown just because black's going to be a little bit too much really for her nose she's got quite a pinky nose um, so I'm just going to bring a little bit of the walnut brown in just to sort of sketch um, in that area there and again the nose we don't have to put like a, a huge amount of detail in to make it look um, nose like um, there's just certain elements you need to get in, um, and then it'll all look, it'll all look super. So just bringing that in there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use these little round, very light pressure pencil strokes. Again, they're going to look a little bit um, grainy, but we don't care. Um, and just sort of look at the dark areas of Nelly's nose, and just bring little pencil on the paper at all times. So you're not lifting your paper, your pencil up at all. And we're just bringing in those little round um, marks in there where the darker elements are. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a nose in there. Exmoor Pony Society is busy with the breeding of this species, Bonnie. Oh, yeah. Well, um, um, I think I need to, Natalie, thank you for that. I need to get in touch with somebody and just ask if I can, you know, help with some fundraising or something. Because... Um, I mean, as much as I'd love to have them on my wall, it would be really nice to be able to raise some money, um, you know, from them. Um, I have to say, they are absolutely amazing to draw. I'm just, I was drawing last night and drew on Friday and they just, you know, when you're drawing something just for you and you just completely you lose yourself in it, it's, um, it's wonderful. Right, so we've got a little bit of the nose in there. Um, obviously, we're going to come back and we're going to sort that out. Thank you, Jean. That's really kind of you. I'll um, I'll take note of that. Thank you. Um, right, and then I'm going to come down here into the mouth, and we're just going to get some of those dark areas in there as well. So I'm going to come back in with the black. Um, black's a really really useful um, colour, and I use it a lot. I'm just going to bring these little sort of wet um, fur marks in here and in here as well. 
and then we're just going to come in here on the edge of her mouth and we're almost going to draw the sort of the negative space so we're going to draw the um the space on the tongue rather than the um the fur coming from her mouth so we're just going to get that dark dark area in there just get a little bit of sketchiness in there too and when, when it comes to the tongue we're going to use blue pink um, and grey in there and again it doesn't have to be perfect it can just be like a nice sketchy whatever um, but we're starting to get a little bit of an idea now of, of her lovely face and how it's sort of um, working working out just get a little bit of that those darker areas in there Anybody who hasn't followed me before and who, who uh, um, sort of maybe maybe joined me for the first time, um, I do apologise for any external noises. Um, I've got all my windows open. It may well rain and thunderstorm any second. Um, and um, the dogs aren't in with me. Um, they're in the other room, but sometimes they do get a bit noisy. Usually they're in with me, but... Um, my, my youngest son's got them. Um, oh, Ashley, so how would you outline a horse? So there are a few different ways you can um, you can use uh, to, to create an outline. Um, you can freehand it. Um, and if you freehand it, I would recommend that you um, draw it first on a scrap piece of paper and then you can do all of your rubbings out and, and you know, sort of fine tuning and all of that type of stuff. Um, and then um, I use a projector to get my outlines down. Um, I find that really, really simple, very clean, very easy. Uh, you can, um, a really good way of doing it as well is printing out your picture um, and then either putting pastel or graphite on the back of it um, and then flipping it over and then drawing, outlining or tracing your picture and the graphite or the pastel will um, then transfer from the back. You can get special transfer papers as well, but that's sort of like a, an easier way. If, you pr if you're working on um, uh, quite a thin paper, um, uh, then you can put it on a window uh, or your computer screen or something like that. Um, so, right, a uh, question for later, maybe a technique video later. When doing a sketch like you did for Nelly... When doing, oh, hang on a second. It's a bit overwhelming to figure out what to put onto your paper as a guide to paint. Do, oh, Doris, I am completely with you on that. And to be honest, um, I always put too much down and then I regret it. Um, I, I find it much, much easier to put less down and then kind of work as you, as you go along. Um, I think it's very personal for each person. Some people like to have a, a, a lot of detail in there. Some people don't like to have a huge amount. Personally, for my uh, my own stuff, um, I put what I think I need. Usually, it's too much, and then I sort of erase it. Um, you know, it's it's entirely up to you. Actually, it's quite nice when doing a sketch just to do it completely freehand. Um, you know, that's it, it's quite a nice way of doing it. Uh, right. So let's just bring around the tongue here as well. Um, this is the tooth there. I don't want to put too much black in there. Tongue in there. And then I'm just going to bring a little bit more of this dark around the tongue down here. Again, just nice loose pencil strokes. Can't hear a thing from the big... Oh no, Susan, that's so good. We've not... We had a big thunderstorm yesterday. Well... I was told we had a big thunderstorm yesterday. I, I kind of heard a little bit of it, but um, I must have been concentrating too much. Well, I was watching Lord of the Rings as well, so maybe that was just too loud when I was drawing, but apparently there was thunder and lightning. But um, it's been very warm this morning. Um, so we'll see. It look, it sound, or it feels like it's going to um, be a bit thundery later. Right, okay, so we've got that down there, and then let's just bring a little bit of this black down here as well. Um, again, just getting a feel for, so it's this sort of uh, random, crazy pencil strokes, um, just getting those darks in. When you get your darks in, it really, really helps to kind of bring the piece to life, you know, no matter what, because it sort of sinks bits back and then your, your lighter bits sort of pull forward and it just works. Oh, I think I can hear the thunder. So let's hope it's not right overhead. Um, I'm just going to bring a little bit of that metal work in there as well and then some of this dark underneath here and again you know we're um, we're just sort of doing a, a, a sketchy underpainting really or one that can be sort of like finished at the end um, so it doesn't really matter about the um, 
your pencil strokes. What I would say is try and make sure that you, um, you know your pencil strokes are, are following the direction of the animal's fur. And I would say that for anything that you're doing, even you know, even if you're kind of sketching from life or something like that, just make sure that you've got those um, those pencil strokes. Um, Ashley, can I do a studio tour? Yes, I will. So at the moment, there's nothing in my studio um, apart from my drawing board, my light and my computer and my recording equipment. That is all being moved tonight into my kitchen. And then my studio is being redone as from tomorrow. And it's very exciting. Um, let me just grab some more colours here. So we've got... I've got cinnamon. Um, right, so I'm just going to bring these into the top of Nelly's head here. I've got um, cinnamon. I've got ochre. These are the uh, Pablos. I've got um, brownish beige. I love this colour. I've got um, charcoal grey. And then I've also got cocoa. Cocoa's a really fabulous brownie grey. Um, and I'm going to start, I think, with a little bit of cinnamon. Um, and I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit of the sort of like the colour up into here. So yes, as soon as my oh, this isn't a great colour actually, but I'm I'm going to go with it and then put some of the yellow in there. As soon as my um, studio has been redone, I will do a, a proper studio tour because at the minute there's there's kind of nothing really to show. Um, I'm just com coming in here and just doing these sort of random little bits of curls. Um, this isn't the best, the cinnamon's not actually the best colour, but when I bring the ochre in, I think that's going to be a little bit better. Her fur is quite strange. In some lights, it's a really, really dark chocolatey brown, and in other lights, it's sort of quite gingery. Um, and her back is actually getting quite, um, she's got a lot of white hair in her back. Um, it's very strange. And then now I'm going to use the cocoa. I'm going to come in down here over her eyes. Just bring these little bits in down here. Um, so my studio, I'm having new floor put in. Um, my floor is sort of, I keep on nearly tipping over. I have tipped over a couple of times in my chair, but I have, um, it's, um, I've got sort of floorboards and they're, they're all kind of just disintegrating where I kind of go backwards and forwards in my chair. And um, so I'm having new floor put down. I'm having the whole of my back wall is having um, cabinets floor to ceiling. And then I'm having some floor standing um, floor cabinets put in so that I can wheel my trolleys in with all of my pencils and everything. Um, so that nothing, everything gets put away so they don't get all really dusty. Um, and, um, and then I'm having a load of stuff uh, framed so I'm going to get uh, you know all of my paintings up there as well. Not my paintings but ones that I've bought from other people so it's going to be, it's going to be really really nice when it's finished. And I've got some beautiful blinds going on the um, on the windows as well, so um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be lovely. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think a couple of weeks and it should all be done. I'm hoping. So just again, just coming in here, just nice, quick, random strokes. By the looks of it, we'll be finished in a we'll be finished in half an hour, won't we? <laughs> just a quick sort of scribble of poor old Nellie. So bless her, she's a good girl. She's been um, we've been we've been trying to do some um, training with her. She's very 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 clever, very clever. She picks on things, picks up on things very easily. Um, but with her being so clever, she also gets a little bit bored, I think. And um, yeah, so we've, we've been, and she likes to jump on people. She absolutely loves people, and she's huge. You know, she is a big dog, and she behaves like a little, little tiny dog, and she just kind of jumps up at people, and it's not very good at all. Um, so when we're going for a walk, she tries to jump up on people, and it's it's awful. She's so naughty. Anyway, so we're trying to do something with that. Right, I'm coming in with a... Um, Oh, you want a before tour? <laughs> I have got some pictures. I have to say, I have got some pictures. Um, at the moment, it's just completely empty. Um, what I might do at the end of this, I might just take my camera off and show you. Um, but it is empty and a little bit grubby. You know when you've had stuff everywhere and then you pull it out and it's like, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> look at the dirt. <laughs> um, so this is the ochre just going in here. 
Um, whatever um, animal you're drawing, if they're sort of like a, a browny colour or a chestnut colour or whatever, um, you want a little bit of an ochre in there as well, just to sort of balance everything out. Um, you know, it just kind of helps. Sometimes you can go a little bit too pinky or a little bit too ready, and just having these sort of these, it's not a particularly attractive colour, but it makes a big difference. Um, oh thank you Michelle it's been a very very long time coming I can tell you um, we've been in the house for 16 years this year and it was always sort of uh, you know a, a, a little bit of a dream I guess um, you know to sort of get that kitchen extended and um, you know because we've got the most beautiful views out of the back um, our our house it's a lovely lovely house but it's um, it, it's got a little bit of a I don't know. It's it's a row of four, um, and it's and it's lovely. And we we extended it in two thousand and seven. Um, you know, we sort of put an extra room and an extra an extra bedroom on in a garage, um, and then sort of haven't really done very much more to it. Um, you know, and and the the kitchen we had done in two thousand and fourteen when I had my hip replaced and it, and it just was horrible right from the offset to be honest I, I never liked it um, and um, yeah so to, to sort of like plan to have the extension um, you know and those lovely bifold doors and everything like that it's been, been really lovely I have to say um, can you do a day in the a day in the life of an artist I'm not sure you'd want to see my day in the life of an artist Ashley but yes my plan is I've got my um I've got my new academy, which is going to be launching, um, launching to my patrons in August, and then launching to everybody else in October, I think. Um, and um, in the academy, I am going to be doing an awful lot more live, popping up, um, you know, Q and A's. I'm using a putty eraser at the minute. I'm just bringing a few little highlights out. If you haven't got one, don't worry. Um, it's kind of how I. This is how I. I draw. I kind of put pigment in and then take it back out again it could drive people crazy um but yeah so so i'm 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 planning uh you know sort of like um weekly live streams not weekly live streams. Oh, like i could do that couldn't i live for a week that would be great i'd love that um no sort of you know uh, events and just little pop-in sessions and everything like that um filming slowly getting darker hold on a second let me see if i can lighten it up Hold on, just two seconds. I think it's the lighting in the room, Debbie. Um, I've just lightened it up a little bit, so you might see some stuff flash up onto the um, uh, onto the screen, but hopefully it will lighten up. I'm just looking at the screen now, thinking, is it lightening up? There you go. Woohoo! Technology for you. It's um, because it started to rain in here. Um, and because I've got half of my lights missing because the electrician took them out on Friday. <laughs> um, but yeah, within the within the academy, I'm going to be doing lots of um, brilliant. Thank you. Um, lots of sort of like little live streams and stuff like that. Q&A sessions. And, um, you know, one of them was sort of like almost like a, a, a breakfast meetup, you know, sort of sitting and we can chat about stuff over breakfast, which I'm quite looking forward to. I'm, I just like to get involved with people and... Um, you know, I might have to shut my windows in a minute because the rain has started. I've got nine tons of rubble sat in the front garden. Um, so that's all a little bit noisy as well. Let me know if it gets too noisy and I'll shut these windows. Um, right, I want to come back in again and I want to start to darken up all of these areas. So I'm going to use the charcoal. Um, you can use black or um, dark sepia or something like that. Um, I'm going to use the charcoal in here and I'm just going to come up and just start to darken in here a little bit. Again, you can see the graininess and I, you know, you learn to love the graininess of pastel matte. And it, I haven't got sharp pencils. With pastel matte, I tend to sharpen my pencils for the eyes. Um, you know, I, I think it's really important to get the details and everything in there, um, you know, with sharp pencils. But then I tend to just let them go blunt um, and it works really quite nicely. So I'm just gonna, gonna coming in here, into the eye area here, just a tad more pressure. And I'm just gonna bring in just a little bit more dark into there, coming around these sort of lighter areas. 
Um, oh, can you hear the rain? If you if it gets annoying, let me know because I I'll, I will shut the windows. Um, might have to in a minute with the, <laughs> with the thunder starting. We'll all have to start singing um, raindrops on roses, won't we? Well, you can sing it. I won't. Not sure that would be um, <laughs> particularly great. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here again. Just get all of these darks in um, up here on the top of her eyes as well. Let's get these really nice dark areas in. Sometimes you think you've gone dark enough, you know, when you start and you think, oh, blimey, that's really dark. And then when you put the rest of the colours in around it, you can see that you haven't gone half as dark as what you need to do. Um, oh, nice to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you can't understand anything that I'm saying. You can watch it back. <laughs> you can watch it back with the, uh, with the subtitles. Bless her. Uh, I'm in North Yorkshire, uh, Stephanie. Um, I'm just, I'm in between um, Ripon and Borough Bridge, so um, just just off the A1, really. Um, oh gosh, Ollie, that yeah, no, I've heard there's some, and in Canada as well, they've had some really, really, really um, hot weather. Um, uh, to be honest, hot for me is sort of 20 degrees here in, in the UK. That's hot enough for me. Oh dear. Right, let's get that a little bit darker in there as well. Um, what really, really matters when you're doing a piece is to get your darks really dark. Oh, have we? Oh, I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd uh, stopped working then, but I can see it's still working. That's okay. Um, yeah, so um, getting those darks really, really dark is um, is really important. I'm going to come back in with the um, cocoa now. And I'm just going to start to bring in. So again, it's a really nice blunt pencil, and it means I can bring in this sort of her chunky um, fur, and I can kind of bring that chunky fur in with just one pencil stroke, which is great. Oh, it's my favourite county as well. It's it's um, they call it God's own God's own country, don't they? North Yorkshire. It's um, it is it's beautiful, and you know a lot of people ask me where I come from because I don't really sound like I've got you know a, a particular accent but I'm I'm Yorkshire Yorkshire born and bred um I was born in Ripon uh, my parents used to have the old deanery in Ripon um if you google it you'll 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 see it it's the most beautiful beautiful building um and that's where I was born and lived sort of until I was 15 um but I had um I had elocution lessons as a child um, so had a very posh voice. I sounded a bit like the Queen <laughs> um, for, for a while until I started working with people from Leeds and then that just all went downhill. My accent disappeared then. <laughs> but it's funny when you get, you know, when I get together with my family, my accent changes again and it starts getting a little bit. They're not really posh, but, you know. Um, right, so we've got that in there quite like this. Um, and then I'm going to come back in with the... Um, the charcoal again I'm just going to bring in some of those little dark areas so again they're just sort of pencil strokes really um, and what's really really good about doing this sort of thing is you really build um, confidence you've got to take a deep breath you've got to you know go it doesn't matter what it turns out like all I'm doing is I'm just mark making I'm just putting lovely marks in and we're just going to build something I apologize I think I'm starting to stick a little bit and I guess that's something to do with the, um, let's say there. Yeah, I'm guessing it's something to do with the thunderstorm. So I do apologise if it starts sort of being a little bit sticky. Um, it should be okay. Um, but yeah, this sort of drawing, is, I think, is really, really good to do on a regular basis. Um, you know, because it just gets you going and gets you thinking about things. Um, Oh, I quite that. I'd be happy with that. G Ben, eighteen degrees. I'd be happy with that. I'd, I'd be all right with that. Um, right. Let's get something around her little nose um, here, and I'm going to use, I think, the brownish beige um, down into her nose. Again, I'm going to be really looking at where my um, first strokes are going. 
and I'm just going to sketch those in. You can see the lighting changes, we'll get a little bit lighter on this. Um, it's beautiful isn't it Stephanie? I mean it really is, it's a lovely lovely um, uh, building. Um, having such brilliant oh thank you just learning pastels using pastel mat you can use so if you're using pastel mat uh, if you're using pastels that is going to work really really well for this because it's a very sort of similar um technique we're just going in really quickly um with with pastels you would tend to work um dark to light um you know whereas with colored pencils we tend to work light to dark really but with the pastel mat it kind of helps you to work get those darker areas in it does work really really nicely um so uh, yeah, I, I see the most beautiful pastel pieces and I keep thinking, oh, I'll try pastels again. And I found, as I was clearing my studio um, yesterday, I found a load of pastels and pan pastels and, um, you know, pastel pencils. And I started to sort of take, take them out and think, oh, should I, what shall I do with these? Shall I do a little bit? And of course, then my whole throat just starts to close <laughs> and I can't breathe so I'm like no the pastels are gonna have to go so I am gifting my pastels to the lovely um artist Laura Pennell she lives just up the road and uh, I'm meeting meeting up with her on Friday and I'm gonna give her all my pastels and then they, they're gone and then I <laughs> never get tem tempted again um but I do sometimes think oh, you know and it's weird isn't it because I think would would it be easier but pastels then have their you know all of their foibles and everything like that so it's not it's not that one's an easy medium over the other you've just got different things to do don't you um started with pastel pencils and pan pastel and pastel, but colored pencil like luminous i know yeah i mean i i tend to um i don't really like using um uh color pencil over pastel anyway um i just don't like the feel of them right i've got my ivory here now um uh, polychromos and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of this I'm just going to scribble it in to be honest I'm just going to scribble it in all where these light colors are if you were hoping to be drawing along with me while I do pristine details um <laughs> I'm sorry uh <laughs> it's not happening um and to be honest I, I start maybe not as scribbly as this but a lot of my pieces I will start very sketchy like this and then kind of build up um I do quite like having a bit of a looser, um, you know, sort of technique with the pencils. But but my downfall is that I just keep going and then I have to physically stop myself and go, right, you're going to have to slow down now and you're going to have to start doing some actual details because um, otherwise you're just going to end up with just scribbles, <laughs> um, you know, and somebody's actually paying you for a highly detailed portrait. So I've got to be quite... Uh, quite careful but I do like these sort of looser um you know so I'm just coming in here uh, my pressure is not that that uh, that hard it's still sort of quite light pressure um it's going to come in here you can see when I come in over the top of some of these other colors with the ivory here what's happening is it then starts to sort of um blend uh, and smooth oh here comes the thunder oh marvelous so if you lose me, you know what's happened. Oh, stopped again. Um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we won't. Um, right, okay, so we've got some lovely colour coming on in here. Um, and now what I want to do is just bring in some of these um, sort of darker elements. So again, I've got the brownish beige here. Um, now, Nellie's got some sort of quite um, sort of woolly, wiry fur in here. So if I use very gentle pressure, but if I kind of use this sort of um, roundy, random pencil stroke in here, what it's going to do is it's going to give me um, the texture of her fur. And that's one of the things that I always sort of look for when I'm drawing an animal. I'll always look at what does their fur, what was it, what does it feel like? What does it look like it feels like? Um, and then I want to sort of try and replicate that. So again, over on this side as well, just this sort of woolly, random. Ooh, yeah, it keeps on stopping and starting. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get through this without it giving up the ghost um, and then down here as well again just sort of like those backwards and forwards so I keep my pencil on the paper and um, I just go backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and I get these really nice sort of loose 
um, pencil lines that ends up looking like fur. Um, you know, I really like to draw animals that look like their fur is sort of moving or it could move or it could sort of, you know, it could twitch its nose at any time. Um, oh gosh, you don't like the, don't you like, I remember, I, I, I love thunder and lightning, I have to say. We used to sit on the bed, my mum's bed, when, oh, there goes the lightning. Um, when I was little and we just used to sort of sit and watch it, it was lovely. And I'm, I'm lucky that my dogs don't, they don't get scared. Oh, I'm going to shut my windows. Hold on just a second. <laughs> right, I'm back. So I've got three windows and they were all open so um, I've shut them all now um, not had any luck with pastel mat I ordered twice and when I got um, it it's missing the grainy surface as well I know that's the problem with pastel mat um, that is an issue um, they do have quality uh, problems um, I tend to work around it uh, you know I mean it's not it's not an excuse and it's an expensive paper and it is a frustrating but I, I tend to, I've never sent a piece of pastel mat back. Um, I just work around it, um, you know, but then I, I tend to not sort of like worry about stuff like that. And there are things that you can use, but I would I would recommend that if you if you do get ones that you can't use, that you send it back or you contact Claire Fontaine. Um, don't get some lightning, no, I won't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, if don't yes, don't be scared of the um, don't be scared of the thunder. But my dogs don't get they're not worried by it. You'd think that they'd be absolutely um the texture you put on the main jewelry. Oh, thank you so much, Karen. Um it's my favourite thing to do is is drawing um texture and and sort of fluff. I absolutely love it. Um you know, and I could just sit there for hours and hours and hours just sort of doing that. Um, you know, and the, the, the mare, I've just started to draw the mare and she's got a very different texture. Um, but it's, yeah, it's lovely. It is lovely. Um, right, so let's now get a little bit. I'm going to bring a bit of the yellow ochre in. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to mm, brown ochre, I think. Polychromized brown ochre. I might swap it in with the yellow ochre as well. Oh. Come on, decisions, decisions. Yellow ochre, that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to bring some of these little little bits in here. Just nice and gently. Just pulling these bits of fur in. And then round. And then... So I've got some sort of strange um, where my uh, my line art is, and hopefully we'll be able to kind of get rid of those a little bit. Um, it's coming through here, and then down again. Just nice, gentle sweeping pencil strokes into there. And with the um, with coloured pencil, of course, it's you know you, once you put one colour down, you're not kind of restricted to it just being that colour. We can then start to um, you know add other colours in there as well. Oh God, like somebody's banging around upstairs. It would be some naughty boy. We're all getting giddy last night with the football. So that's that. Let's bring a little bit more down into here as well. Again, if you sort of put, start putting the yellow in and, you, and it starts to be a little bit too strong, um, what you can do is you can bring in sort of other colours on the top of it to sort of help it. Um, one of the colours that's quite good if you've put too much yellow in is actually using something like the granite rose, which is like a pink, um, and you can actually bring that in over the top of the yellow just to sort of um, just to tone it back a little bit if it's becoming a bit too yellowy. Pink and yellow work really, really, really nicely on animals, I find. Um, so just bring a little bit of that in. 
Um, and then let's just work on her nose a little bit now. Um, I'm going to use the uh, brownish beige, but I'm going to sharpen it up. Okay, so I'm just going to sharpen this up. And um, what we're going to do is we're just going to work on her nose a little bit. I'm just going to bring in a few little sort of um, hairy bits on the top. Oh, you're okay. Just, just you can just. We're just going to start on the nose, so um, you can start there and catch up. Don't worry about it. Um, and I'm going to use these very little, tiny, round pencil strokes. A little bit more lightning there, <laughs> um, because dogs' noses have got that lovely texture. And I'm going to come round and over. We've got this lovely light area on her nose here. And actually, there's a bit of yellowy light in there too. So my pencil is on the paper at all times. And I'm just gently bringing that through and round. And then I'm coming over here. This is quite a light area. So nice light pressure with a little bit of colour in there. And then we're just going to come round. And then where we had the... Um, the walnut brown when we put her nose in originally I'm just going to come in over the top of that with the Pablo and what you'll find if you're using pastel matte is you'll find that the Pablo then starts to um, blend and smooth out all of the grain. Pablos are fabulous on pastel matte. They are they're so velvety and smooth and lovely. Um, thank you so much thank you um, you know that they're, they're just really really nice pencils I don't use them enough I don't think um, and actually when I was looking at, at colors for for Nelly um, you know thinking I'll do it on pastel matte I was thinking oh gosh yeah actually the um, the Pablos are going to be really super for this okay so we need to get a bit more of her nose out this way so we don't lose the shaping of it I'm just going to bring a little bit more down into there as well. Bless her heart, she's such a lovely girl. She has a, a proper joie de vivre, I think. She really, really loves life. She's got this... I keep on taking it away from her and then feeling sorry for her and giving it back, but she's got this flipping toy and it just... Um, it's, it's got a squeak. Oh hi! I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I'm I'm I, I'm I'm going to go with Anuja. Um, it's so nice to have you here. Hi. Um, yeah, she um, she's got this squeaky toy, and it's really really annoying. It just sort of squeaks all of the time. Oh, eyeballs! Hurrah! <laughs> That's a good start. Eyeballs are always a good start. So I'm just bringing a little bit more black into there. A little bit more black round into here. Um, I've got to keep it, keep an eye on the time as well. Oh, we've only been going, not even been going an hour yet. We're nearly finished. Um, right, and then I'm going to come in with a little bit more brown. Um, we're going to use, I want like a dark brown. I've got that bister. That's what I'm going to use, I think. A bit of this bister, I think. And then... Sorry, I'm live streaming. Sorry. Bye. Oh. <laughs> That's my eldest son. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to bring in a little bit of this brown, but I don't want it to go too brown because um, I, I need it still to be a little bit pinky. She's she's definitely got that sort of livery coloured nose. Um, she's very very pinky. Hi, Mihaela. Mi 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 Honestly, I'm I'm dreadful at renou uh, pronouncing names. I hope I've got that right. Nice to have you here. <laughs> Um, right, so just a little bit more of that brown in there. I just need to be careful that this nose isn't going... My nose is going a little bit narrow. It needs to be a little bit fatter. I'm just going to take that, just that little bit out there. And I'm just going to come down, make it a bit rounder, that's better. Um, and then let's just bring a little bit of a shadow into there. And round, and then I'm going to bring some pink in. Um, let's just make sure we've got these nostrils coming through here and here. Um, just a little bit of this bister in there as well. The bister's sort of like quite a 
uh, I guess it's sort of like a, a, a walnut brown equivalent in the Pablo range. Um, okay, not the, not, not the most brilliantest of noses, but and then I'm going to use my um, uh, granite rose and I'm going to come into here and I'm just going to make sure that we've got the pinkiness in here. Again, we don't have to be absolutely perfectly, um, you know, get everything exactly right. I'm going to bring a little bit of highlight down into the bottom here. So I'm just going to use my putty eraser just to dab that out. In there. And then um, I'm just going to bring the granite rose down into here. So the other thing when, when creating a piece like this is you do have to be sort of quite careful not to end up, um, you know, making some bits absolutely perfect and brilliantly detailed and then other bits not. You know, you've got to kind of bring the whole, the whole look throughout the piece. Um, okay, so that's all fine there. And then let's just bring some of that vista in around her um, nose here and just get some of these darker, darker bits in. Nice and sort of like loose and, you know, just flick your pencil round. Um, you know, we don't want any sort of really, um, you know, prescribed pencil marks it's all nice and loose let's get a little bit more shadow going on in here and down into here as well how to grow a youtube channel um the best way to grow a youtube channel is to um, have really good content and post um, every week um, you know and, and that's what it's all about I mean my YouTube channel has grown since I've started it I mean it's not nearly as big as some some um, artist channels um, but um, I tend to I don't post enough so you need to you need to be posting at, you know at least once a week and have really really good content Um, right okay so we've got her little sort of scruffy face going on in there just bring a little bit of this dark up into here as well and I'm just going to make these around her eyes just that little bit darker too start darken that up there a bit more just coming in there And then just a little bit more. Just watching the tones and um, you know how how everything's. Uh, let's bring a little bit of that into there too. Um, right, and then I'm going to bring some of the dark into here. So I've got the vista here, and I'm going to start to bring in a little bit more up on the top here. Again, just these really quick, sketchy pencil strokes. A little bit more up onto here. We want sort of quite a nice um, faded bit around the top of her head. We don't want sort of like a, an outline or, uh, you know, like a sharp, um, everything being sharp around the top of her head we want it to be nice and um, nice and soft coming around here and down so that needs to be a little bit darker in here I'll bring a little bit more dark into there and then I just want to bring some of the um, a bit more uh, sort of movement around the edge here as well so we're not sort of can't got sort of straight line or anything like that we want to try and avoid straight lines at all costs um, 
you know being that little bit looser oh thank you so much um being that little bit looser it, it's gonna it's gonna kind of bring quite a bit of personality and everything in there and that's why i tend to do sort of quite loose pencil strokes with all my portraits um you know i go in sort of quite loosely to begin with and then tighten up as we go through just come through there and then just bring a little bit of form into here as well so we can kind of see the how how the um, the fur's kind of growing going round a bit darker in there and then let's just get a little bit darker down onto this ear as well What's nice about drawing from a, um, a photograph that's blurred <laughs> is that we can't see all the details, so we don't feel obliged to put them all in. Um, and actually, you know, if you end up with a, if you had this portrait to draw and it was a really, really, really super detailed piece, uh, photograph, I find what really helps is to um, blur it a little bit so that the detail disappears, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then. Um, you end up sort of like concentrating just on the uh, the tonal values and the the shaping and everything like that. Oh, <laughs> Joni, she's got a big parting on her. <laughs> She'll look like Slipper then. Slipper has a parting. She's um, she's got a big parting on her head. She's so naughty, as Slipper. She's been, uh, we've been going for walks and Slipper's quite a good girl now, so she's been off the lead sometimes. And um, she likes behind and then you look behind and you expect her to be there and she's like miles behind. And you're like, come on Slipper. And she has to like charge up to her. She gets preoccupied with smelling things. She's a, she's a monkey. We nipped out this morning, I've got all my pencils. I dusted them all yesterday. It's like, so much dust in the house so I, I sat and cleaned all my pencils yesterday put a load away in boxes and then um, so a lot of my pencils now are in uh, are in the in the kitchen and um, I was thinking oh lord Finney's going to have eaten all of my all of my pencils isn't he by the time I get home but he hadn't um, right so I'm going to go back in with the cinnamon even though I didn't particularly like it um, because I just want to bring some of this sort of more um uh, warmer uh, ready tones in on the edge on this one here so I'm just bringing in just a little bit in there and then just bring a little bit I think the key really is just to kind of let go and just you know just have a bit of a bit of fun with that um, and then, um, right, I'm going to take the black again. I'm actually going to use the polychromos black now. And I'm just going to bring in a couple of more specific marks in here. Again, I'm being still quite loose with my pencil. Um, let's bring those in there. And then we're going to be really brave in a second and start work on this tongue. Give any of the pencils. He may, he may well. Oh, he's such a... I'm trying to eat my son's fat rascal yesterday. He literally was just, his face was just there. <laughs> and just, he just sort of thinks he's, you know, he's above everything. Rules don't apply to Vincent at all. He just does what, what he wants to do. Is it okay if I post on my Insta? I really want your opinion about my art. Oh, um, you can you can um, you can message me with it, and um, I'll have a look for you. So, so just pop pop it on a message or an email for me, and um, I'll have a look at your Instagram. No problem. Um, right. So I'm just going to come up here, just darken up again. Let's 
make sure, sure these are really nice and dark. Darker in here. And you can see, even though we haven't got a massive amount of details, we've still got, um, you know, we can still see who she is. And around there. Right, okay. So let's start to kind of look at this tongue. Um, I'm going to start with a very light layer of the granite rose. I'm going to use round pencil strokes. Now the granite rose isn't the right colour, it's too of a, it's too much of a yellowy pink. And when we look at tongues, we a lot of the time we um there's like a there's like a little bubbly bit on there as well, which we might do, we might not. <laughs> depends. Depends how it works. Um but when we when we look at tongues, we tend to sort of think pink. Tongue is pink and tongue is sort of quite a, a pale pink, but actually dogs' tongues change, uh, not change, but they're all very different. Um and um Nelly's tongue is actually quite a pink pink. Um you found a fish in the woods. Oh gosh. <laughs> um so if we just kind of put that that granite rose on first it gives us a bit of a start and then i'm using the um the pink madder lake um and i'm just going to come in and again we've just got to be careful not to go not to go crazy with our pressure because we want it to be nice and light um so i'm just using these little round pencil strokes Again, it's about being brave, you know, because sometimes you put a colour down and you think, oh, have I done the right thing? Um, but just just go for it. Um, you know, we've got a little tooth there. Um, and this is sort of like a little bit of a ridge of the tongue coming up and the same here. Got a little bit of the ridge of the tongue coming up there. Um, and so when I'm when I'm doing this, all of the time I'm kind of a few steps ahead and I'm thinking right what then is going to happen is I'm going to bring some um, cold grey one in and I, if I bring the cold grey one in over the top of the pink um, what's going to happen is it's going to smooth and blend um, because the cold grey one is like a bluey colour it's going to then make everything just that little bit bluey as well um, Oops. so I'm going to get my cold grey one um, and I'm just going to start to work in over the top of that and you can see straight away what it does is it smooths everything and it kind of just knocks that pinkiness down just a little bit and with it being a bluey tinge over the top of the pink you then get almost like a violety colour not not you know a, 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 a deep violety colour but you start to get that more tongue colour um, you know and then now what I'm thinking is you know yes this is going fine um, I need to probably get some highlighted bits in there but I also need to get this bit up here really dark how am I going to get this bit up here really dark that's going to be with the dark indigo um, so you can see I'm not really I'm not really being particularly precious about this I'm not really being very careful I'm just whacking that color in over the top of the pink not using hard pressure still sort of like nice light pressure um, we'll ignore that bit of the bubble on the tongue there because that's we'll do that another day <laughs> I might bring a little bit of something in with the mu museum aquarelle wet it wet it and you know um, but straight away just within a couple of seconds you know we've got gratefully a um, you know gratefully a, a, a tongue um, you know and that's not looking so bad then you've got to be really brave when you pick the um, dark indigo up um, so we've got this, the middle of our tongue coming down here, so it's quite strong at the top and then it just sort of drifts off. And then up here this is really quite dark. Um, and it is really, really vital that we get the depth in there and the darkness in there because otherwise it's not going to look like the tongue is sort of coming from her mouth. So again I'm just using these round pencil strokes coming down and then just l gently reducing the pressure as we come down so light pressure light pressure light pressure a little bit darker pressure up here and a few more roundy circles to get this much darker up at the top here and then again round pencil strokes 
as we come down to here and then I'm just going to bring in this little bit of a um, a step here where her tongue's sitting over the top of her tooth and we've got that sort of curve again we don't want any specific stop starts so just using very light pressure and varying the um, the amount of sort of little circly bits that are going down and then we start to get some really nice um, sort of shading in that tongue there and again we can start to come in on the top here too so it's a little bit lighter on this side darker here you can really darken that bit up and for me when it comes to things like this less is most definitely more um you know it, it's um it, you can kind of get into the trap of sort of spending hours and hours and hours on something when you don't really need to and if you can just put as as much effort as you need to and then leave it and then that's going to give you a really nice sort of tongue looking tongue i'm just going to come back in again with the um the cold gray one again we can just very gently bring that in over the top of that blue and it will just automatically smooth it all out it's coming through there We don't want a line or anything like that, so we want it all nicely blended. Um, but that's looking okay. And then I'm going to bring the Pink Madder Lake back again. And I'm just going to bring a little bit more pinkiness down on the bottom here. A little bit more pinky in there. Into there, and then the last thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to find my museum aquarelle. This is the only white that I'm using here, and I'm just going to very gently bring some of that in over the top, so we just get a little bit of pale in there. Just coming through. Bring a little bit into there as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring up just a touch of harder pressure just onto the edge there. Okay, and then what we can do at the end is sort of sharpen this up and we can maybe bring some of the um, uh, those bubbly bits in but for the time being that's that's all fine and then I'm just going to bring the black in again and we're just going to darken up very gently into there Good. Okay. Um, oh, thank you, Stephanie. Um, yeah, she's such a sweet girl. Uh, right, so I'm going to come back in with that um, brownish beige. Just into here, we're just going to colour that in there. You know, and if you wanted to, you could use this, like I said before, you could use this as like an underpainting almost. Um, you know and uh, then start to kind of work on the details over the top if you wanted so I'm just bringing into there little bit more of the um, charcoal bit more of the charcoal gray in here so we can get that nice 
darkness into there. I need this um, eye just a little bit darker. Okay, that's all good. Um, right, so let's just bring a little bit of the pinkiness in around her mouth. So again, I'm going to use that granite rose. Um, she's got very pink chops, isn't Nelly? And very, very white teeth. Um, she's got really white teeth. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so we don't want it. We want a bit of that tooth in there, but. Um, and then I'm just going to use that uh, cold grey one again, just into here. Right, and then I'm going to use the. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of the pink Madder Lake, and then we're going to put some sort of grey in over the top. Um, now then, this is this bit here. Do you already tested the dermat I think of. Um, I, I, I haven't, I haven't tested them as such. I've had a little bit of a play with them. To be honest, I don't think they're going to be a pencil that I will be using on a regular basis, just because they are. Um, that they're, they're not really sort of artist quality pencils. The 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 light fast ratings aren't that good. Um, they're they're very very soft, and I've. You know, I don't particularly like a pencil that's as soft as that. Um, so, I, I'm, and they only come in 24 at the moment and you can't buy them in open stock. So I think for the time being, I'm going to be, it's nice to have some, but I, I think I'm going to be, um, I won't be using them, I don't think. Um, apparently they're quite nice on the dark papers, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure I'll, it, there'll be a, a, a you know one that I use particularly often um, right I'm going to come down here and just get these little uh, chinny bits on down here oh the leopard I love doing the leopard that was a that was a really really good piece and again so we're just sort of following the hair but being really quite nice and um, sketchy with it let's come down here this is quite a dark bit here me down on that area. And here as well. And then just start to bring that hair out and round. That's really kind of you, Sam. Thank you. And down here, and then we've got the blue of the cotton. Oh, do you know that's the one pencil I didn't grab? It's in the kitchen, so I'm going to be using a different blue that I said I was going to be using. I usually have all my pencils to hand, but there, so I've gone totally um, wrong here, which doesn't really matter. Again, it doesn't really matter because um, you know, we're just sort of sketching it in, so it's coming through here. Um, let's get that a little bit better in there. It's coming down there, isn't it? And then uh, right, and then again, sort of, it's quite her coat's quite woolly when it comes down to here. And it's quite dark in here. So again, just bringing that through. No, no, this isn't a commission. No, this is um, this is just um, uh, just for for YouTube, uh, just for this afternoon. Just drawing Nelly. Um, I've got um, I've got quite a few commissions this month actually, um, but they would be. I'd still use this sort of technique, but maybe not quite as rough and ready as this. So her collar kind of disappears into her fur there. Um, let's just bring a little bit more of this brown into here. 
a bit more brown into that nose area. The nose has gone a bit skew with. Look at this needs to be bigger. And go in with that black. Oh, hi Marie. Um, it's coming through there. And just make this a little bit deeper as well. That's a bit better, isn't it? Let's darken that up there. So yeah, sort of, you know, having a bit of a play with drawing like this, it just, it just, you know, just helps you sort of loosen up a little bit. Um, this is the brownish beige I'm using here. Um, you know, and it's quite nice to sort of do, do sketching anyway. Sketching from life, I think, is always a really good thing to do. It just helps you sort of understand um, structure and light and, uh, you know, all of that type of thing. So again, I'm just coming in here, a little bit of curly, getting a bit of that um, building again on that texture that's in there. Just get, coming in here, sort of within the, those sort of like little shapes and everything like that. It's coming through here. And let's just get, I think, a little bit more of that yellow in on the top. So I'm going to use the um, light yellow ochre again, just in the top here, just to get some of these more yellowy bits coming in. Into there. And she's a nice subject, um, you know, to draw because she is so lovely and uh, sort of fluffy. She's um, she has a haircut on a regular basis. <laughs> You've got to keep her her hair quite short because she has um, she has hydrotherapy every week, and um, she was going with a full coat, and she gets really, really, really long hair. And it was just, you know, it would take ages to dry. So we had to make the decision to kind of properly clip her. So she's she's got a, quite a short coat now, but she looks so cute. She does look like a fluffy bear. She's got all sorts. Of, you're probably the same if you've got dogs, you probably have all sorts of, they've probably got a, the Sunday name. And then, um, uh, you know, you probably got other names for them. Nelly's got masses of names. <laughs> my uh, my eldest son calls her Nelling Nellington Bear. Um, I call her what do I call her? Boo Boo, Bouge. She gets she's all sorts of names, and they've all got their own little song as well. We sing to them, <laughs> and it all rhymes. All of the little songs. Right, okay, so that's coming through quite nice. I'm going to bring some more of that brownish beige in just onto the top of the nose up here, just to bring a little bit more um, of the uh, the structure in. And you can see, you know, all of those sort of like pencil marks where my very crude line drawing was, you can't really see them anymore. They've all, um, you know, sort of joined, joined up and, and disappeared. So that's all good. Um, right, I'm going to bring a little bit more brown in. Um, I'll use a little bit of the walnut brown just up into here. Just bring that brown in there. And then I think what I'll do is I'll bring a little bit of the um, warm grey too in as well, um, just to sort of fade up. She is the youngest child. <laughs> she gets away with murder. Yeah, so Nelly is one, Vinny is two. Um, oh, poor Vinny. So Vinny was two on the on the 1st of July. And when, when Nelly was one, she had a hat, 
she had these special doggy woofins, like little dog muffins, and it was all very exciting for them. And they had this sort of like little birthday party. Um, we forgot we forgot Vinny's birthday, and it was awful. And it was like about nine o'clock at night, and I was like, oh, "It's Vinny's birthday, and we've forgotten." <laughs> so we had to sing happy birthday to him and everything. And he, I think um, he he pretended he didn't mind, but I think he probably did. <laughs> So, and then Slipper's birthday is in August and she'll be four this year. So, uh, yes, Nellie is the youngest. Oh, honestly, I'm always singing, always singing stuff to the dogs. <laughs> so, you know, my, now the kitchen's done, um, everything's fine. But before, when the kitchen was in kind of being done, the, there was no, there was a roof, but it was all like rafters and it was directly below my daughter's uh, bedroom. And she used to come down and go, I was trying to get a lie in, but because of all your singing, I've had to get up. <laughs> oh dear. I don't know. I know, poor old Vinnie. Poor old Vinnie. Um, right. Oh, she's looking, she's looking all right, isn't she? Right, let's just darken up again around her nose. The problem is when, when you start getting more pencil in, the bits where you think you've sort of finished, you need to put more in. Just want to darken up round here a little bit. So I do want to start doing more um, uh, live live streams and everything like that once my studio is back up and running. I'd like to do some more of these because I do enjoy them. Um, and because I do my art club every Tuesday with, with Patreon, which is great. And then I'm going to be doing some more bits and pieces when my academy launches. So it's... Um, you know, I think the live bits are really, I really enjoy them. Oh, it's Jason here. Just thought you'd drop in and see how things are going. <laughs> I hope you, I hope you're following along, Jason. <laughs> I'm going speedy like you. <laughs> Finishing a whole portrait in a, whatever, however long. Um, so I'm coming in with the um, uh, brownish beige in here. I'm just going to bring some into the side of her here. Um, again, just just sort of these crazy round pencil strokes. She's quite woolly. You can't really see what's going on. So just sort of random, uh, you know, just go for it, really. And and with the Pablos, they, they're so nice and soft and velvety that they work really, really nice. Um, so just coming through down. We can bring a little bit of the highlights out and everything like that as well can see kind of where the collar's going um, and then just sort of just let it drift off onto the edges I think it looks quite nice but you just I think it's that it's that sort of I, I honestly think drawing like like this gives you a little bit of confidence it's not gonna look absolutely incredible but um, you know it's it's just going to let you sort of not get bogged down with with trying to work out what goes here and what goes there um you know because it's it doesn't really it doesn't really matter i mean obviously if you're trying to draw real, realism and 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 loads of details and stuff like that it, it it can matter i know but um i think to build confidence i think doing stuff like this works really really well so i'm just going to come down here again Just bring in some of that craziness. Um, right, so I'm going to use the um, uh, Pablo Black. I'm just going to come underneath the collar area here and just start to kind of darken up. So again, just still nice and sketchy. Going around here. Don't can't really see much of the collar, to be honest. It's all sort of like a little bit blurry. Um, darken up that area in there a bit just coming down into here and just add a little bit more structure around the mouth area here it's going around I've got all of that wrong but um when you're doing something like this and if something goes a little bit wrong 
the the worst thing you can do is fixate on it and and then try and make it all right the best thing you can do is kind of skirt over it (laughs) ignore it um blur it a little bit and then when anybody's looking at it their eyes will just skip over it and they'll go back to where they're kind of you know um and, and if you can kind of, I do that with, with everything I do, you know, something's not kind of going to plan or I'm thinking, oh, this foot looks a bit strange. Oh gosh, what am I going to do with this? And then I'm just like, well, I'll just keep it blurred and then nobody will notice it. And they don't, they just skirt around it and go and look at something else. Um, so the, the, the worst thing you can do is, is try and, if there's something blurred on your picture, the worst thing you can do is to try and um, add details to it because all you're doing is you're bringing focus to an area that doesn't need focus um you know so just uh just let it let it go let it all be nice and vague and then you whoever's looking at your pieces their eyes just going to skim over the top of it so just bring a little bit more into there so this collar area here it's all a little bit blurred and vague and Oh no, Penny! I'm gonna get my big stick out for you. Beat you, beat you with it. <laughs> um, no, Im- imposter syndrome. All it is is just normal human behaviour. Um, and we all we all get to the point sometimes where we think we can't do something, or we're you know not um, not good enough for something or whatever. So anyway, I'm chatting to you tomorrow, Penny. So watch out. <laughs> you'd be cancelling now you'd be too scared um if you have colored background instead of white the t- the color tone of your pencils will also change yes daphne they will and actually for a dog like this um having a toned background is really nice because you already then start with with almost like your mid-tones so it, it can work really really nicely and sort of aid you in that as well um you know so sort of choosing your pencil that your paper color before you start is is really key because it will sort of change how you're going to build things and how they're going to um you know sort of uh, sort of work out right so let's just bring a little bit more vagueness in there i'm going to use my brownish beige again again these sort of wild circly pencil strokes <laughs> Oh, uh, Penny, I'm sure it's absolutely wonderful. So, I mean, look at my, her mouth is all just gone. <laughs> it really is. It really is the thief of joy. And, you know, when we all do it, we all compare and, it, you know, and, and it's what you do with the, it's what you do with the reaction you get um, that matters um you know if you if you dwell on it and you allow it to um you know sort of make things make yourself feel worse then you know it's just not going to um it's just not going to make you feel nice at all is it now i'm gonna have to put some sort of a thing down here because this at the moment looks like her neck sort of sitting there so i'm gonna have to bring and bring a little bit of that vista in um, and we're just going to bring a little bit of definition down here so we know that actually this is her neck here and her shoulders so that's 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 more where her shoulders are coming here and this is actually her her back because um, she's sort of sitting at an angle just going to bring a little bit of that dark in there as well Now, if I was doing a um, like a super realistic piece, I would still use this um, method for sort of getting the curly bits in, and then I'd just build and build and build. <sighs> you call her rag mop. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's quite a funny old thing, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my putty eraser. I'm just going to not get rid of it all, but just sort of fade that off a little bit. Right, so um, I want to just bring a little bit of refinement into um, the collar area here. Not that we can see it because it is it is a bit blurry, but just so that we can sort of um, make out a little bit what it is. Let's bring a bit of dark into there. 
would have probably been a sensible idea to leave the collar out completely but sensible hardly ever um, crops up in my vocabulary so if we just sort of um, again just sort of bring some like sketchy lines in there then we'll it'll look artistic won't it and it'll be fine yeah if in doubt put some sketchy lines in because then it looks artistic <laughs> um what is the most what is the most important thing in drawing we should follow oh um okay so um what i would say the most important thing in drawing you should follow, well depending on what you want to do but if it's realism um and you're wanting to draw sort of realistic animals the most important thing is um well there are a few uh, you need to get your um everything in the right place you know right sizes and, and right shapes and everything um the your values i would say are the most important part of your drawing so your dark darks your light lights um, and then i would say if you're drawing animals you need to make sure that you are um if you want realism your pencil strokes need to follow the direction of the fur that's really really important um because then you kind of start to capture the um, the whole form of the dog and everything like that, um, you know. But I would say uh, once you've got all of your um, everything in the right place, your perspective and everything like that correct, um, the most important part to me are the values. You know, that's that's really really key. Dark darks, light lights, and then everything will start to sort of um, work quite nicely. I'm just going to bring a little bit more onto her nose area here and onto the top of her nose that's where the hair starts to come in here that's a bit better and then I don't really want this I've got like a, quite a harsh line on the edge of her nose there which I don't really want Yeah, that little nose looks a bit wonky to be honest, but it could be fine. Just bring a bit darker up into there. Just make that. That's a bit better. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I honestly, Karen, I think I think everybody feels that way. Um, you know, you, 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 you look on Instagram every day and these these pieces pop up and you think, how on earth, you know, um, and, and then you, you know, you look at people's lives and you think, oh gosh, you know, I'd really, really want their life. I'm sure people look at my kitchen and think, flipping it, Bonnie, you know, what, why are you showing me your lovely kitchen? But I mean, I've... I show my kitchen because I, I'm, I, I'm really excited about it and because I've actually lived in, in a... <laughs> in absolute squalor for quite a long time i haven't lived in squalor at all that's a lie but you know i've lived without a kitchen for quite a long time where we've just been living on microwavable meals and sandwiches which has been pretty grim um seeing as i do like to cook um and um uh, the the invasion of privacy that you get you know when you've got builders in your house oh god anyway um so um yeah that's been a, it's been a very long time coming trying to swap my negative voice in my head for the voice yes terry that's what you need to do and it's all practice you know it doesn't i know it doesn't happen overnight um you know it, it is definitely practice you have to practice being um you know uh, that that sort of positive voice um I don't, oh have i got it i've got a book where did i put it oh, i wonder if i've taken it in the other room i was going to show you a book that i i have but it's disappeared the sumo book um is a really really good book um if you haven't got it already um it's by a chap called paul mcgee and it's called sumo which is um means shut up move on and it you know if you're having sort of problems with sort of um you know trying to get that negativity out of your out of your head and everything it's a really really good book to uh, to read um you know it gives you some really great exercises uh thought i had it but i think it's out in the other room did you hear about the new instagram algorithm well they well the algorithm changes all of the time every day it changes so what's the what's supposed to be the latest um 
it's such a it's such a clever thing is the algorithm that and it's also different for every person because we kind of post differently um you know so it uh, it always amazes me that my feed never looks the same as anybody else's feed just bring a little bit more of that dark into here the tongue there and then i'm just going to bring that uh, cold gray back on and just um Make sure that's just nicely. I'm only using really light pressure here. Um, and then just get this black in here again so we get these. And into here. Ah, oh, you've read it, haven't you, Judy? Yes, it is such a good book. Such a good book. Gonna bring some little fur lines into there. Sometimes it's good to sort of have things smoothed off, but then other times it's really quite nice to have a bit of texture in there. Right, okay, so let's get a little bit of blue into here. So, like I said, I chose the ultramarine, but I've only got um light cobalt turquoise because <laughs> the other one's in the other room. So I'm just gonna use this and I'm just gonna bring a little bit in. Again, just sketch it in. It is. It is a really good read. And what's nice about it is it. Um, it's full of pictures, <laughs> so it's great for me. Um, <laughs> I don't do well with words. I do do. I love reading. But um, yes, it is. It's a. It is a really good one. Right. So then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in um, now another blue here got a bit of this actually um, this is light blue this is probably a good one you won't have this but um, it's um, it's just going to darken it up a little bit this is just a luminance that I've got hanging around I think we've got this for the turtle that we've been drawing in art club so I have two um, I have two trolleys one that has uh, one of pretty much one of each pencil that I have in a pot and sometimes about 10 of each, of each pencil sort of like little tiny ones and then um and then i have my tray my uh trolley that i've got all of the pencils that i work with on a regular basis um that's that's right next to me do you also use a paper stump in your work sometimes yeah sometimes i've got a little one uh, where is it got a little one here it's a brand new one actually um so yes yeah, sometimes i'll go in and just sort of like you know just um just smooth everything out a little bit majority of the time i tend to just use my pencils um it, it's just easier uh right so i'm going to use the dark indigo now just to bring in some uh just darker shadows into the collar area here just under underneath here i mean it's all very blurred so you can't really see very much and then I'm just going to bring some of that dark indigo up. Dark indigo rather than using like a black or a grey. Um, you know, just to kind of keep it so it's nice. Um, sort of coming around there. Again, I don't really want, um, you know, too harsh lines. And then I'm just going to bring, again, just bring a little bit of that dark indigo. It's not perfect. It's not the right colour, but it'll be absolutely fine bringing that in there so we've got an idea of her collar in there now, now it sort of disappears into her hair there um the other thing i use as well sometimes are um i did have a lovely pot of them and, the, and then vinnie's destroyed that so they're kind of everywhere but little um uh, cotton buds they're quite good too um, you know just to sort of help and the other thing I use quite regularly is a little brush so I use like a little paint brush might just use it in here and I just sort of use it dry and I just come in and um, it just sort of softens everything out a little bit um, quite nice for this sort of thing and you can like soften edges and it just sort of um, yeah it's quite nice really so anything that you've got really that um, 
that you've got to hand. What I don't use is I don't use uh, solvents in my work at all. Um, I once used vodka. <laughs> Uh, I don't drink vodka, but I, I, I once used vodka as like um, an al alcohol, because alcohol can be really good with um, oil based, either oil based or or uh, wax based. I'm not sure which one they work better with, but uh, an alcohol uh, can can sort of like blend and everything as well. So I used vodka in a piece. That was, I mean, it was a it was a silly little piece, but. Um, uh, yeah, so I use <laughs> I use vodka for that, but I never use mineral spirits because um, I don't I don't really like the uh, the effect they give, but they also give me the most horrific migraines. I mean, to the point where I I can't function at all. I can't talk. I can't do anything. Um, I, I just don't like them. So I, I tend to use pure pencil, and then something like this, quite nice. Um, you know, little tiny brush, and um, you can just sort of make things a little bit I mean it doesn't make a massive difference but you know works quite nicely uh, no it's it's a it's a um uh, it's just a little paintbrush this one and it's dry and it just sort of on pastel matte works really nice because it just moves the pigment around a little bit and just smooths it all off so um right okay so let's start putting a few little finishing touches in and bring in a few darker areas in so I'm just going to bring a little bit of the black into here just so we get a proper idea of where her sort of face starts and everything like that. Let's just come into there. That's all good. I just want to make this a little bit more yellowier. I'm actually going to bring the um, brown ochre. a little bit of the brown oak do I ever do use an underpainting no not not really um so I I have done uh, watercolor underpaintings um and I have done near color uh, uh or near color yes near color two underpaintings with the um uh, the water soluble wax crayon I've done underpaintings of those um I don't ever use pastels uh, ever um they i can't breathe using pastels and i i can't bear the feel of pencil on the top of pastel it's like um I just, ugh, just makes my screen, skin crawl i just can't bear it so i tend to just use pure pencil um you know so for for the majority of my pieces i tend to use maybe a, a, a um, an underpainting on some of my tutorials just to show different techniques but for the majority of my own pieces and my um and my commissions i just use pure pencil um, I might use watercolour pencils in, but I use them dry. You know, so I don't... Um, I could show you my... Before we finish, I could show you my um, my little Exmoor ponies. If anybody wants to see those, you can have a look at how they're getting on. I um, might have to zoom out quite a bit because it's massive. Um right good okay so now what i want to do is just bring in a little bit of um tiny little bit of definition um, i'm going to do that with um not that I'll probably do that with the warm gray too um oh i'm not just <laughs> I'm not dissing pastel pencils. Um, they just I just lose the ability to breathe. That's all. <laughs> um, I've got a whole box of them outside because I I did I did use pastels to begin with and I've done a few commissions in them, and I could never understand why I felt so poorly afterwards. And it is because I I have quite a strong reaction to them, but it's um it's a shame because you know I see the most beautiful pieces. And then you see, you think, oh, you know, they're going to be much easier than coloured pencil, but then they're really not, because <laughs> they've all got, you know, every medium's got its what you need to be able to do. And um, for me, coloured pencils just click, and and um, you know, I, I love them. Um, but no, I wouldn't ever diss her. <laughs> not when the king of pastels is on my live stream. I'm not going to diss a pastel. <laughs> um, right. So just coming in here a little bit. Not that you can see it very much, but uh, 
Well, it certainly looks like Nelly. I've got a big smudge there, look. Let's just take that out. How I managed to keep my white pastel mat clean, I have no idea. Um, looks like I have dogs milling around. Oh, we had a bird in the... In the <laughs> we had a bird in the... Um, in the studio this morning that was really not fun at all um they get in they get into my this is the ivory i'm using here they get in to the fire the fire's never on but they fall down and then they start clattering around um so <laughs> we woke my youngest son up and we said you've got to sort this bird out so he opened all the windows opened the thing this bird shot out my daughter got the video of the bird sh shooting out of the thing she then ran out of the room and shut the door and was screaming and then um, Sid was like I've got it I've got it and he managed to catch this little bird and we let it out through the window but oh gosh I love birds I absolutely love them but in the house they oh no um <laughs> don't be tough Jason <laughs> I'm not sure uh, yeah no I'm not going to be doing any pastels I um I love to look at them I really do love to look at them but um yeah I'm, I'll get myself all like a, a, a mask and everything like that. Um, I just love my coloured pencils too much. I really do. I think they. Um, what is the benefit of using watercolour pencils dry? Well, um, so I use these ones, uh, the um, the Museum Aquarelles, and they're just beautiful. So if I bring a little bit of this in here, the the pigment's really really um, strong. So you get loads of pigment. They're lovely and soft. And on the pastel mat, they're beautiful because they, they kind of add the colour and then they um, they sort of uh, blend everything underneath. And they're just so lovely to use. They really are beautiful, beautiful pencils. Um, I think these are the most expensive pencils you can buy. Um, they're just lovely. I love the Museum Aquarelles, but I only use them dry. Um, but they're just, they're just super. They really are. They're lovely. Um... Um, blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think. I think we're all so different, aren't we? You know, uh, you know, with with Jason's work, you, you know, his realism and everything like that. Well, you know, but but you're you, Jason's Jason. I'm me. You know, we're all we're all so different, and you know, we kind of go to artists for different things don't we um you know but i i don't think there should ever be competition or anything like that because we're all so even if we use the same medium it, we're all still unique in our own way because because of our personalities and everything like that you know so i'm sure there are tons of people who can't bear me <laughs> that blooming bonnie she just witters on all of the time I just wish she'd just shut up <laughs> That's what two of them say to me anyway. Um, right, okay, so I, I'm, I think Nellie's pretty, um, oh God, <laughs> dead mice in the face. Um, I think Nellie's pretty much done here. I'm, I'm quite happy with how she's sort of worked out. She's been, a, it's been a couple of hours. Um, she actually looks, she actually looks better on, on the, on the drawing board than she does on the screen i think um she looks a little bit flat on the screen which is a shame um maybe uh, that's what i'm going to do actually maybe i'm just going to darken up um i think just in these really dark areas let's just go a little bit darker and just make sure that she really is nice and dark in there so i'm just going to come in into here and just darken those up just a touch And in here as well, just make sure we've got those nice, so we've got that nice contrast in there. But I don't think it, I don't think she's that bad actually for um, for a couple of hours work. I think she's, I think it's worked out all right. I'll um I'll I'll, I'll grab my um the Exmoor ponies and I'll I'll just show you those how I'm getting on with them. So I'm just starting the main on the. I've actually recorded it, not with voiceover, but um, uh, I was just going to do sort of like a quick video and just to show you how the uh, I was creating the hair because it, it sort of starts from nothing and just builds up. Um, oh, thank you, Jason. You're so sweet. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I think Nellie's pretty much there, really. 
uh, could maybe go a little bit darker in places but I think she's you know for a couple of hours I think she's not um, she's not done too badly has she so if you have been drawing along and you um, and you've got um, a Nelly to show do um, do please share um, and you could you can use the um, the hashtag darling Nelly if, if you want to and then I can pick those up and I can do like a bit of a montage I think it'd be um, really really nice to see that um, Brilliant. Well, if you want, oh gosh, I don't know what that was. Big bang. <laughs> um, if you want to see my um, Exmoor ponies, let me um, just move my oops, my magnets out of the way because it is a massive, massive piece. And then I'll I'll bring them on and, and show them to you. What magnets everywhere. So I'm going to move Nelly out of the way. Oh, I'm just going to have to magnetise that. But I mean Nelly's broken my drawing board in that um, nothing actually stays stays put anymore um right let me just grab those for you and, um, bring that down a little bit actually just make sure it's um, focused on there but hopefully you can hopefully you can see um, ooh, what's going on iPads disappearing now oh, everything's falling off stay there iPhone <laughs> so these these are the these are the ponies that I'm drawing at the minute so I'm just making a start on you can see the, ma the ma <laughs> everything's um, disappearing the mare's uh, forelock here I'm just making a start on that but you can see how big it is it's a, a whole sheet of pastel mat um, but it's um, it, it, it's absolutely just the most beautiful thing to draw and it starts off very very sketchy it starts off very very um you know vague um uh, and then to get these little bits in here it is all about just using your pencil as if you're kind of drawing up and underneath so you're coming up and under those little bits to kind of create that fur but what you've got to do is you've got to get it on um you've got to get that color in first and then you can start to um you know sort of build the the texture and everything and it's um when you first put the well you can see here on the mare's mane here on the forelock here it's very very grainy and 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 nothing really and it's just how you sort of build up yes it's it's a 50 by 70 uh, so it's not the, the biggest biggest sheet it's not the 100 by 70 it's the 50 by 70 but it's kind of overall it's kind of over the whole sheet um but you've just got to have that so how many hours in this i think there's probably about maybe about 20 hours so far and i've probably got another there's probably about 40 hours to go i think um <laughs> yes debbie sorry yeah i'm i'm, I'm on to the ponies now <laughs> um but it's it's just they're just a really lovely thing to just get completely immersed in um you know it's not a tutorial it's not a commission it's just a, a photograph i've been allowed to use and um it, it's just so lovely to sit and just get completely immersed in um you know uh, in this no no background um if i was going to do a background the uh the background would be done first i found backgrounds really really hard to do um so I, I wouldn't ever draw a piece and then put a background in afterwards because i'd be terrified of ruining it so if i was going to do a background the background would go in first and then um you know and then at least i knew that i'd get that that in there and that's right that's what i did with the turtle i've done the background first um but this one this is just like total and utter indulgence 
just complete indulgence. Um, I've got her little ear there, just at the start on her little ear there as well. Um, but this this forelock here, this is this is ha this is a lot of work going in here, and it will be, um, you know, I mean, I don't know how many layers are in this yet, but I've got to put an awful lot more in. Um, you know, and then start with her lovely hair and everything. But it's been, it's just a total joy to do. And I, I, I get, yeah, I'm very naughty. I should be, um, I should be doing all sorts of other things, but I'm not <laughs> just doing this. So I'm going to be drawing this again um, tonight and this afternoon. Um, oh, that's kind of you, Natalie. Well, I think what I want to do with this one is I want to, um, I want to try and potentially make, you know, um, make some money for, for like an Exmoor, to help with the Exmoor Pony Society, um, which I think would be really nice. And I think uh, what I'll do is I'll probably send it away to be photographed and have some prints done of it. And then I can maybe, if I, if I sell the original, I can maybe have a print put on my wall because I, I really, really do love it. And I think, you know, if you're an artist and you're doing commissions or you're doing tutorials or something like that, I would absolutely, um, I 100% say to you, every now and again more often than not do a piece for yourself you know because you just fall back in love with what you do you really do not that I don't not that I hate doing commissions and and um you know and and my tutorials because I don't I love them because I the tutorials I love because I just get to chat away and you know witter on um but doing a piece just for you is just is so so important so important anyway right so I am um I'm going to love you and leave you I'll just, uh, what will I do? Just pull this, these magnets in and then they won't, oops, disappear. Leave that one there. Um, so thank you all ever so much for joining me. It's been, um, it's been really, really good fun. Um, and I'll catch you next time. And do please share your pictures of Nelly with me. I'd love to see them. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you all, see you all very soon. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.